Two harpsichords, thought to be lost forever. But then musicologists discovered drawings and historical writings describing their illustrious past. Come along now as we discover the lost harpsichords. Hey, this is Simeon, and you know, I know that was a little dramatic, but you know, it's exciting to think about a, an instrument that was played in the 1700s in Germany. These were just kind of fell apart and just kind of faded into obscurity, and people forgot about them for a long time until recently. You know, uh, we have these wonderful musicologists that have just researched and discovered like these writings and journals and drawings that depict these wonderful instruments. And we have two of these and we call these the lost harpsichords. But you know what? They're not lost anymore because uh, we're, we're finding them. We're discovering them today. And we have the uh, German Thierbo harpsichord and then the German Lautenwerk. And these are really peculiar in a way, and it's what makes them even more exciting and interesting. So let's dive in and discover these together. The first one we're gonna take a look at is the uh, German Thierbo. Okay, so you see I have these in the full version of Contact. You need the full version of Contact for these instruments. They're, they are provided as what is called uh, Contact Multis. So we have two instances of uh, Contact instrument. One are the, uh, the notes on, and for each of these, these harpsichords, what they call lute harpsichords, they are not velocity sensitive. So you hit the key, and if you use the same sample each time, it's going to just sound monotonous. And so thankfully we have eight note on. So we have a little variation. And then, you know, you have the note off where the uh, where the plectrum resets itself. And so you've got four uh, of those, four of those, uh, uh, you know, key reset or key on. So you've got eight key downs and four on. So that just kind of helps provide a dynamic, not being velocity dynamic. And so, um, see, we've got the browser view and we've got two 16 foot stops and a special four foot stop. This is the lower 16 foot stop. And there we've got two uh, contact instruments. And one of course is the uh, note on and the other is the note off. So let's, um, let's take a listen to that. And this is 440. And listen to how nice and mellow that is. Let me tell you what I just did. I reached, I started reaching for the sustain pedal and, and I'm notorious for doing that. But the only problem is these harpsichords do not have uh, dampers. And so a sustain pedal uh, was not even there on these. And so I, I caught myself, but what that allows, it allows the strings to completely ring out. So uh, it, it changes the way that you play and approach the instrument. So let's get back to it. No sustain pedal. So I'm keeping my foot away from the sustain pedal because it wouldn't do me any good. And listen to how that just, it'll just ring out. That's another thing. You can't play very quickly because everything starts blurring together. So again, it alters the way you play. You approach it a little bit differently.
Isn't that cool? So let's uh, go to the, um, that's the lower stop. Now let's go to the upper. It's kind of, and it's, they call it a nasal stop and you can, you can hear why. It's just got a nasally tone quality to it. And there we ran out of notes there. So we go from here to here. And now let's combine the lower 16 with that four foot uh, stop, which is string. It's a metallic string. So let's just hear what that, uh, that does to the sound. I'm preaching to the to myself. <laughs> Let's go to another key and listen. You hear those overtones. Okay, now we can just bring all of them together. And each of these are presets. So we've got, um, I think we've got like seven presets or six presets here. So they give us the individual stops and they give us a, a preset that has uh, both 16s and the four foot stop together. And so that way we can get a sense of how everything sounds. And so I'm loading that up and here we go. This is... Um, just such a huge sound. And again, I'm gotta gotta stay away from that sustain pedal. <laughs> Foot stop that metallic string really just adds that extra sparkle on top. is so beautiful. So what I'd like to do too, uh, I love to bring a uh, black hole into these using some effects because it just takes it even further. So I'll pull black hole up to see what's going on. Uh, pull up the desktop. And so here we go. Yeah, black hole is just an amazing uh, plug-in. And I've got the Dreamscape preset loaded up. I mean, I figured out a way to find all of the extra presets. So let's, uh, let's just dive into this. Uh, here we go. Let's see, so you can see both of these. huge and I love having that lower range so you get that really big beefy sound and you're 
already taken the decay of the uh, of the Therabo harpsichord, and it, and then you're adding black hole to it. it just adds another dimension. Another plugin that I've just uh, started using is Recirculate from, uh, let's see, yeah, from Newfangled Audio. And this is a really crazy uh, delay type. It just takes it, uh, takes things just in some crazy places. So um, I've just got a couple of favorites loaded up. I'm going to disable Black Hole and just uh, play a couple of these for you. That's wild. And so let's keep going. Let's just try a couple more of these. Um, fade away. Very nice. And I think this is probably my favorite uh, preset so far is the uh, drone machine. Uh, so get ready for this. This is fun. And what were we playing a little bit ago? So that's a lot of fun. And let's pull them together. Let's put black hole and uh, and recirculate together. It's crazy. So we can just keep going. And whatever effects that you have, uh, it's fun to experiment with them. So I'm just going to stay stay on what I what I was just on. So just have fun, just, uh, you know, just try something, go for it and uh, have fun because uh, these sounds allow you to do some crazy things. These, these, what's called the lute harpsichords were, the strings were gut strings. And uh, I know that sounds pretty, pretty wild, but uh, you might have heard of like some of the, the medieval instruments like the viola da gamba that use gut strings. And what that does, that just provides such an unusual tone. So the, uh, the Therbo has two 16 foot stops that were gut strings. And then it had a four foot stop that was metallic. Very unique. Okay, so let's go on to the uh, to the second harpsichord, and that is the German Lautenwerk. And uh, yeah, it's like you know, Amberg is a uh, German derivative uh, of German origin. So it's like I get I get to tap into a little bit of my uh, my heritage there, and it's just really exciting. Now these were called lute harpsichords because they they wanted to kind of get the sound of that really open acoustic sound of the lute. And the, the German Lautenwerk, it was, it's like, it almost looks like a lute because it's like an oval shape. It's very unusual, uh, very unusual. And so let me pull this up. And, you know, with this one, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the effects. With this one, you only have one preset, uh, one multi for this. No reverb, it's just because the releases are just there, not damped. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so let's think, let's think about it like a lute. Very nice, very nice. And this is 440. The cool thing is that they give you the original tuning. I think it's around 412. So uh, let's um, <laughs> let's listen to that using the same uh, same preset on the uh, German Lautenwerk. Now this is, that's the 412, and that's the 440. Let's go back to the 412. It's almost like, almost like a whole semitone down. Okay, so let's plug uh, let's plug in black hole <laughs> and just just let it do its thing. Um, it just it's just so cool, and you can use whatever effects that you have to do these kinds of experiments on these. And you know, you might discover some really wonderful combinations. Um, Still in 412. Yeah, and let's pop in recirculate. <laughs> and with that uh, with that string uh, that string swarm preset. And let's stay in 412. It's kind of it's kind of an interesting uh, So that is the amazing discoveries by Real Samples and the wonderful musicologists and those who have dedicated themselves to preserving and uh, making music history and these instruments survive throughout the decades. Bringing something from 1700s and we're sitting here and are able to experience them in this uh, wonderful way through sampling and it's just such an amazing experience for me each time that I play. I learn so much and I discover so much. So until next time, be sure to check out all the links in the description uh, and uh, until next time, this is Simeon reminding you to always stay joyful and I'll see you next time.